good morning students you yeah, say your prayer yeah thank you naan or nalla asriyar naan ungalku thayagavum thandeyagavum irundhu muriyaga anbod kalviye bodipen naan or nalla asriyar naan ungalku thayagavum thandeyagavum irundhu muriyaga anbod kalviye bodipen naan or nalla asriyar naan ungalku thayagavum thandeyagavum irundhu muriyaga anbod kalviye bodipen okay students take your social science book and come to page number 116 yeah so today we will discuss about urbanization urbanization so nothing but so the process of society's transformation from rural to urban you yeah, know so the people so change their lifestyle from rural to urban yeah so that means if the people so begin to practice secondary and tertiary activities you yeah, know so if they begin to practice if they left primary activity and begin to practice secondary and tertiary activities you yeah, know so the transformation of from rural to urban it is called as urbanization yeah so in today's class we will discuss about uh, so what is meant by urbanization so the causes of urbanization then origin and growth of world urbanization then finally about uh, the consequences of urbanization okay ma so in our previous classes we discussed about migration yeah so the types of migration so first uh, what is meant by migration yeah so permanent or semi permanent change of residence of an individual or a group of people over a significant distance you yeah, know so migration means so the form of geographical mobility of population yeah so if the people so move from one locality to another locality so temporarily or permanently so then it is called as migration you yeah, know so we discussed about the types of migration yeah so based on the movements associated with unsuitable limit it is classified as internal migration then international migration yeah then if the migration is based on the willingness of the migration then it is called as voluntary migration then involuntary or forced migration yeah then if the migration is based on the duration of stay of migrants in the place of destination it is called as short term or long term or seasonal migration then we discussed about the consequences of migration yes yeah, so that is the importance of migration yeah so in terms of demographic consequences then social consequences then economic then environmental consequences yeah so we have discussed about migration in detail in our previous classes yeah so today's class we discuss about urbanization so what is meant by urbanization urbanization so nothing but it refers to the process in which there is an increase in the proportion of population living in towns and cities you know so no, normally urbanization means so the process of society's transformation from rural to urban you know so the transformation of society so transformation of so people lifestyle from rural to urban area you know so urbanization refers to the process in which there is an increase in population in towns and cities okay ma so urbanization is the process in which there is an increase in the proportion of population living in towns and cities you know if the population if the people so prefer to live in towns and cities means then the population in that area increase you know so that is called as urbanization you know so you know nowadays people prefer to live in so towns and cities rather than in villages okay ma so because in towns and cities you have lot of opportunities so in term of education in term of job yeah so there are lot transport yeah so in, uh, there are lot of opportunities are there in cities and towns yeah so that's why so the population in urban areas getting increased yeah so that process is called as urbanization okay ma so the causes of urbanization so what was the causes of urbanization So urbanization is supported by three factors. Yes, urbanization is driven by three factors. Yeah, it is accelerated by three factors. Yeah. So natural population growth. Yeah. So sometimes so in the cities and town, towns. Yeah. So the populations grow naturally. Yeah. Then second one, rural to urban migration. Yeah. So most of the people in village areas. Yeah. So they are moving towards urban area. So they are getting migrated towards urban area. So because of the opportunities available there you know so for education so transport infrastructure so infrastructure is well in towns when compared to rural areas you know so automatically so people so migrate from rural to urban area you know then the reclassification of rural areas into urban areas so nowadays so rural areas so they are changing into urban area you know so the urban area so getting so getting expanded you know so the surrounding areas of urban area so nowadays it is getting expanded so that so the nearby villages yeah so the villages so which are near to towns yeah so are now merged with the towns and they are also getting converted into 
urban areas. You know, so urbanization is driven by three factors. So naturally, population growth is seen there. Yeah. Then rural people get migrated towards urban area. Then so rural areas so getting converted into urban areas. Yeah. So present day urbanization includes so changes in demographic. So demographic, yeah. So change in population. Yeah. So including uh, sex. Uh, then including education, literacy rate. Yeah. So like that. Yeah. Then land cover. So economic process. Yeah. And the characteristics of geographical area. Yeah, so present day urbanization includes the changes in demographics, land cover, economic process, and the characteristics of geographical area. Yeah. So do you know, in 2007, so for the first time in world history, the global urban population exceeded the global rural population, and the world population has remained predominantly urban thereafter. Yeah, so from 2007 onwards, so the population in urban area is more when compared to rural area. So before 2007, so the rural population is more in global level, in world level. Yeah. But after 2007, so the situation changed. Yeah. So global population, urban population is uh, increasing, but rural population is get decreasing. Yeah. So the people prefer to live in urban areas. Yeah. So when compared to rural areas. So origin and growth of world urbanization. Yeah. So do you know when the process of urbanization began in the world history? So do you have any idea? Yeah, it started in the prehistoric period itself. So during the ancient period. Yeah. So when human beings began to settle in a particular place to practice agriculture. So from that day onwards, so the concept of urbanization had begun to grow. Okay, well. So the process of urbanization in the world has can be studied as ancient period, medieval period, then modern period. Yeah. So first we will discuss about ancient period. First, ancient period. The urban center started developing during the prehistoric period, that is before 10,000 years. So the urban centers started developing in the world during the prehistoric period. So prehistoric period means so historic periods we have written evidence. So prehistoric periods so there is no written evidence, but we have the tools and yes, the equipments used to be the our ancestors. Yeah. So based on that, so we will decide about their age, yes, and their lifestyle. So that is called as prehistoric period. Yeah. So during this period, primitive men. So primitive men means so belonging to an early stage in the development of humans. Yeah, so there is no proper society. Yeah. So during this period, primitive men started domestication of plants and animals. Yeah, so in the prehistoric period, yeah, so at the end of the prehistoric period, so human beings so began to domesticate, so began to domesticate so plants and animals. Yeah. So it was the period of the development of permanent settlements. Yeah, so when human beings so began to domesticate plants and animals, so he began to stay in a place permanently. Yeah. So the river values of Egypt, Greece and India gave rise to the agrarian communities. So agrarian means so related with agriculture. Yeah, so the river value regions of the Egypt, Greece and India gave rise to the agrarian communities which eventually formed the urban communities and urban centers. Yeah, so the urban centers started developed during the prehistoric period, that is before 10,000 years. Yeah, so during that time, so human beings so started domesticating animals and plants. Yeah. So it was the period of the development of permanent settlements. So during that time, so the river valley regions of the Egypt, Greece and India gave rise to the agrarian communities which eventually formed, so which slowly formed into the urban communities and urban centers. Yeah. So the excess production of food grain was the major reason for urbanization. Yeah. So the excess production of food grains. Because so human beings so learned the process of agriculture. Yeah. So there is an increase in the production of food grains. Yeah. So this was the major reason for urbanization. Yeah. So Ur and Babylon in Mesopotamia, Thebes and Alexandria in Egypt, Athens in Greece, Harappa and Mohenjadaro in India were the noted prehistoric cities of the world. Yeah. So Ur and Babylon, Thebes and Alexandria, Athens, Harappa and Mohenjadaro. Yeah. So they were the noted prehistoric cities of the world. Yeah. So they were the cities which were found in the world so during the prehistoric period. Yeah, so that is before, almost before 5,000 years ago. Yeah, so during that time, so human beings began to settle in a particular place because he began to practice agriculture and also domesticated plants and animals. Yeah, so the excess production of food grains so was the main reason for the process of urbanization. Okay, 
So in the historic period, that is in the ancient period, the increase in the number and the size of urban centers occurred during the two great colonizing period of the Greeks and Roman. Yeah. So in the ancient period, so in the Europe continent, so there were two major empires. So one is Greece and one other one is Rome. Yeah. So Rome, uh, it is now in Italy. Yeah, so Rome is the capital city of Italy. Yeah, so Greece is a separate country. So both were located in the south of Europe. Yeah. So during that time, so the two major empires in the ancient period was Greek and Roman Empire. Yeah. So in the ancient period, the increase in the number and size of urban centers occurred during the two great colonizing period. So colonization means so to take control over an area or a country so that is not yours by using force. Yeah, so to take control over an area or a country. Yeah. So the two great colonizing period of the Greek and Roman. Yeah. During the beginning of the 7th century itself, many cities were found near the Aegean Sea. Yes, the Aegean Sea which is located so towards the east of Greece. Okay, ma. So during the beginning of 7th century itself, so many cities were found near the Aegean Sea. Yeah. So during the Greek colonizing period, the expansion of trade promoted the growth of towns and cities. Yeah. So during the Greek colonizing period. Yeah. So when Greece, yeah. when Greeks so began to occupy another country, so they had trade contact with those countries. Yeah. So this result in the growth of towns and cities. Yeah. So in the ancient period, the increase in the numbers and size of the urban centers occurred during during the two great colonizing periods of the Greek and Roman. So during the beginning of 7th century itself, many cities were found near the agency, especially during the Greek colonizing period, the expansion of trade, so the increase in trade, so promoted the growth of towns and cities. In, in the medieval period, it refers to the period after 11th century, so medieval period, so it refers to the period after 11th century. During this period, the European countries increased their overseas trade which played an important role in the revival of European towns and cities after a period of low development. You know, so medieval period, it refers to the period after 11th century. You know, so during this time, so the European countries, you know, so they increased their overseas trade contact with another countries, so which played an important role in the increase in the number of towns and cities in the Europe. You know, so at the end of the 13th century, Paris, London, Geneva, Milan and Venice were the important cities found in Europe. You know, so at the end of the 13th century, so Paris, you know, the capital city of France. London, you know, you know so the famous city, you know, so the famous capital city of England. You know, so Geneva, it is in Switzerland. Milan and Venice, so both were in Italy. You know, so they were the important cities so found in Europe. You know, so during the ancient period, so because of the expansion of Greek and Roman Empire, so there was an increase in towns and urbans in the Europe continent. Yeah. Then in the medieval period, so it refers to the period after the 11th century. So during this period, so the European countries so had overseas trade contact with other countries. Yeah. It played an important role in the revival of European towns and cities. Yeah. So at the end of the 13th century, Paris, London, Geneva, Milan and Venice so were the important cities that were found in Europe. Then the modern period, so the growth of urbanization in the modern period. So this period starts from 17th century. It marks the third phase of development in urbanization. So modern period so starts from 17th century. You know, so it marks the third phase of development in urbanization. So the industrial revolution in the 19th century accelerated the growth of towns and cities. You know, so industrial revolution, so which began in England. You know, so from that period onwards only, so human beings so began to use machines. You know, so the age of machines. So this period is called as age of machines. You know, so human beings began to manufacture and use machines. You know, so that's why this period is called as industrial revolution. You know, so the industrial revolution in the 19th century accelerated the growth of towns and cities. You know, the Europeans with urban civilization gave birth to a large number of new towns in North America and the Soviet Union. Yes, the Europeans with urban civilization so gave birth to a large number of new towns in North America and the Soviet Union. The modern means of transport and communication, the development of new trade routes during 19th century have strengthened the trade centers and urban areas. Yes, so the modern period, so the modern urbanization concept developed from the 17th century. Yeah. So especially after the industrial revolution, so in the 19th century, so that accelerated the growth of towns and cities. So the Europeans with urbanization 
gave birth to a large number of new towns in North America and the Soviet Union. Uh, so the modern means of transport and communication, the development of new trade routes. So during 19th century had strengthened the trade centers and the urban areas. So the latest development in urbanization was noticed in the continent of Africa. Uh, so the latest development in the urbanization was noticed in the continent of Africa. Before 1930, Africa had towns only on its coast, but now it has 50 towns with a population exceeding 10 lakhs. Uh, so before 1930, Africa had towns only on its coastal area, but now it has 50 towns with a population exceeding 10 lakhs. Uh, so major cities in Africa are Cairo, Nairobi, Mombasa, Bulawayo, Douala, Abidjan. Logos, Accra, Addis Ababa, Leopoldville, Luanda, Cape Town, Natal, Pretoria, etc. Yeah, so before 1930, so Africa had a town only in coastal area. Yeah, but now it had 50 towns in its interior with a population exceeding 10 lakh. Yeah, so major cities in Africa are Cairo, Nairobi, Mombasa, Bulawayo, Douala, Abidjan, Logos. Accra, Addis Ababa, Leopoldville, Luanda, Cape Town, Natal, Pretoria, etc. Yeah. So thus, in the modern age, the accelerating urbanization is resulting in a redistribution of population throughout the world. Yeah. So thus, in the modern age, so the increase in urbanization is resulting in a redistribution of population. So the people, so moving from rural to urban area. So the redistribution of population, so throughout the world. So this map shows you the World urbanization, so urban population in percentage wise in each continent. Uh, so do you know? So you know that uh, urban population. So the urbanization concept began in the ancient period itself. Uh, so in ancient period, so the process of urbanization is due to big humans settlement in the particular place, followed by the domestication of plants and animals. Uh, in the medieval period, so the urbanization concept is based on the Trade activities. Yeah, so because of the expansion of trade activities, so there is an increase in urban areas. Yeah. Then in the modern period, so because of the industrial revolution and also the development of uh, transport and communication, so helped the expansion of urban centers. Yeah. So now, so the percentage of urban population. Yeah. So if you take in North America continent, it is 82 percentage of the people living in urban areas. Then in South America, that is Latin America and the Caribbean island. So 81% of the people in urban area. Then in Europe continent, it is 74%. Then Oceania. So Oceania means it includes Australia and New Zealand countries. Yeah, so there 68% of the people in urban areas. Then in Asia, yeah, so nearly 50%. So half of the population is in urban areas. Then in Africa, so 43% of the population is in urban areas. Yeah. So world average, so the urban population is 55 percentage. Yeah. So the rural areas, so just 45 percentage. So it shows that the urban population is more when compared to the rural population. So then, so this uh, shows the world top five cities in population wise. Yeah. If you take Tokyo, so the capital city of Japan, so the population is 37 million. So 37 million means yeah, 3.7 crore people are there. Yeah, so just imagine, so the size of the city, yeah. so Tokyo, so the capital city of Japan, so there the population is 37 million. Then next place it was Delhi, so our capital city, so there the population is 29 million, so 2.9 crore. Then third one, Shanghai, so which was in China, yeah, so 26 million. Then in Mexico city, so which was in Mexico, so Mexico, which, uh, where is Mexico, do you know? So just... Uh, to the south of United States of America, yeah, so North America continent. So to the south of America, so United States of America, so there is a country called as Mexico. So in that uh, Mexico country, there is a city called as Mexico City. So there the population is 22 million. Yeah. Then in Brazil, so which was in South America. Yeah, so Brazil, a country in South America. Yeah, so there the population in a city called as Sao Paulo was 22 million. Yeah, so the, these are the world top five cities in population. So first to Tokyo, then Delhi, then Shanghai, then Mexico City, then Sao Paulo. Okay, ma? So then consequences of urbanization. So we have discussed about the origin and growth of world urbanization. So from ancient period, medieval period, then modern period. 
then the consequence of urbanization so the importance of urbanization so the effects so the results of urbanization yeah so what happened so because of, of urbanization yeah so first housing and slums yeah so there is a lack of space for housing and a marked reduction in the quality of houses in the urban areas due to increase in population yeah so because of the increase in population so there is a lack of space for housing yeah and also there is a reduction in the quality of housing in the urban areas yeah so this problem so may get increase in the upcoming years yeah so there is a lack of space for housing and there is a reduction in the quality of housing in the urban areas so because of the increase in population yeah so this this problem so may get increase in the upcoming years yeah so rapid rate of urbanization results in the development of slum areas yeah so you can see in this picture so slum areas yeah so slum areas so you can see the people so living in a poor economic condition so poor hygienic condition yeah so their sanitation is not proper yeah so they live in the areas so where the disease can easily spread give us a rapid rate of urbanization results the development of slums so slum means an area of a city that is very poor and where their houses are dirty and in bad condition so you can see in this picture so the houses are in very bad condition so they were dirty yeah so this is because of the rapid increase in population in urban areas yeah so there is a lack of space for housing and a reduction in the quality of houses in the urban area so only due to the increase in population so the urban areas yeah so most of the urban areas can hold the population only to a particular limit yeah but now it is increasing yeah so it can't hold the population so because more people are migrating towards towns the next problem is overcrowding yeah so overcrowding leads to the unhealthy environment in the urban areas overcrowding means so more population so overcrowd you know so it leads to the unhealthy environment in the urban areas it also the cause of many diseases and riots you know so it leads to the cause of many diseases and riots you know so in overcrowding so in more population in area so the spreading of the diseases is very quick you know so the diseases can spread very quickly you know and there is a chance of violence and also the riots you know so overcrowding leads to the unhealthy environment in the urban areas it is also the causes of many diseases and riots so water supply drainage and sanitation so another one major problem in the urban areas so water supply then drainage so drainage so in which the liquid or water you know so the waste water that were allowed to flow yeah so like a drainage system yeah then sanitation so the equipment and system that keeps places clean especially by removing the human waste yeah so the equipment and the system that keeps the places clean yeah so that is called as sanitation yeah so nowadays so no city has round the clock water supply in the world so that means so no city in the world has 24 hours water supply yeah so only in the time limit they can get water yeah so no city has round the clock water supply in the world yeah so the city people yeah so can't get water so throughout the day yeah so then the drainage situation is equally bad yeah so they can't remove their waste and things yeah so the drainage system yeah, so the drainage situation is very bad in the city side yeah then the removal of garbage so garbage yeah so the waste food and paper so that you throw away you know, so garbage so the waste items you know, so the removal of garbage is a himalayan task so himalayan task means so that much difficult you know, so the removal of garbage is very difficult for the urban local bodies you know, so that is for the municipalities and corporations it is very difficult for them to remove the waste items so that may that are thrown away by the city people so the urban people yeah so water supply drainage and sanitation so no city has round the clock water supply in the world drainage situation is equally bad yeah then the removal of garbage is a humanitarian task for the urban local bodies then transportation and traffic so lack of planned and adequate arrangement for traffic and transport is another major problem in urban centers the increasing number of two wheelers and cars makes the traffic problem was you know, so they cause air pollution as well you know, so transportation and traffic you know so one of the major problem in the urban areas you know, 
So, you have also an experience, you know, so whenever you visit our nearby locality, so like Eero to Coimbatore, during evening time means you can see the traffic, you know, so how it worsened our timing, you know, so the traffic problem became very worse, you know. they also cause air pollution and also noise pollution, you know, so lack of planned and adequate arrangement for traffic and transport is another major problem in urban centers. Yeah. So, the uh, increasing number of two-wheelers, so nowadays, so the two-wheelers, so the numbering of two-wheelers get increased, yeah. and also even cars, yeah. so car also get increased, the number of cars also get increased, yeah. it make the traffic problem worse, yeah. so people nowadays avoid the public transport. Yeah, so they begin to use their own two wheelers and cars. Yeah, it make the traffic problem worse. Yeah, they also cause air pollution as well. Then the another major important problem is pollution. So towns and cities are the major polluters of environment. So when compared to villages, so there is no pollution problem in village. But if you take towns and cities, so they are the major polluters of environment. Yeah, so cities discharge their entire sewage. So sewage. You yeah, used water and waste substances that are produced by human bodies that are carried away from houses and factories. Yeah, so sewage, so used waste substances, used water and waste substances that are produced by human bodies that are carried away from their houses and factories. Yeah, so cities discharge their entire sewage and industrial effluents. Yeah, so effluent, so liquid waste especially chemicals. You know, synthesis, they re release the liquid waste, so that contains chemicals only. You know, so they were untreated into the nearby rivers. You know, so cities discharge their entire sewages under the industrial vessels. You know, so they were released into, so they were released into nearby rivers, so without uh, treating them properly. You know, industries in and around the urban centers pollute the atmosphere with the smoke and the toxic gases. You know, so apart from that, so the industries, so in and around the urban areas, so they pollute the atmosphere with the smoke and the toxic gases released by them. You know, so these are the major consequences of urbanization. You know, so first, housing and slum. You know, so there is a lack of space for housing and there is a reduction in the quality of house. You know, then overcrowding, you know, so which results in the unhealthy environment, yeah, so that causes many diseases and uh, riots. Yeah. Then water supply, drainage and sanitation. So there is no city in the world has uh, water supply so throughout the day. Yeah. Then the removal of garbage is a biggest task for the urban local bodies. Then transportation and traffic. So the traffic in the cities becoming worse, so getting worse. Yeah. Then pollution, so towns and uh, cities are the major polluters of environment. Yeah. So these are the consequences of urbanization. Okay students, so today's class we have discussed about urbanization. Yeah. So urbanization, so the process in which there is an increase in the proportion of population living in towns and cities. So we discussed about the causes of urbanization. So the natural population growth, rural to urban migration, then the reclassification of rural areas into urban areas. Yeah. Then we discussed about the origin and the growth of world urbanization. Yeah. So how the cities grow emerged in ancient period, then in the medieval period, then in the modern period. Yeah. So in the ancient period, it is due to so human settlement. Yeah. So because so human beings began to domesticate plants and animals, so the excess production of food grains was the major reason for urbanization. So we discussed about uh, the prehistoric towns, so Ur and Babylon, Thebes and Alexandria, Athens in Greece, then Harappa and Mohenjo-daro. Yeah. Then in the ancient period, so the increase in the number and size of urban centers, so is due to the colonizing period of Greek and Roman, uh, that is in the 7th century. Yeah. Then in the medieval period, so it refers to the period after 11th century, so the, at the end of the 13th century, so we can see the important cities in Europe, so like Paris, London, Geneva, Milan, Venice. Yeah. Then in the modern period, so the period starts from the 17th century. Yeah. Then we discussed about uh, the latest development in urbanization, so which was seen in the continent of Africa. Then we discussed about uh, the world urbanization and the world top five cities. So what are the world top five cities? Yeah, Tokyo, Delhi, Shanghai, Mexico City, then Sao Paulo. Yeah. Then finally, we discussed about the consequences of urbanization, so the effects of urbanization. Yeah. So housing and slums, overcrowding, water supply, drainage and sanitation, transportation and traffic, then pollution. Okay, okay students, so take your book. So take page number 117. 
So textbook reading. So read the heading, Origin and Growth of World Organization. So in that, read the heading, Ancient Period, then Medieval Period. Then homework. So take page number 121. So fifth question, then sixth question. Fifth question, what is urbanization? Take page number 116. Yeah, see the last heading, urbanization. So urbanization refers to the process in which there is an increase in the proportion of population living in the towns and cities. That is the answer for fifth question. Then sixth, list out any four most populous cities in the world. So take page number 118. So right hand side, so that box, world top five cities. Name of the city. So just to write the city name. Tokyo, Delhi, Shanghai, Mexico City. So just four cities enough. Because they just asked four most populous cities in the world. Yeah, so Tokyo, Delhi, Shanghai, then Mexico City. So that is the answer for your Sixth question. Yeah. So we have completed the unit. Yeah. So migration and urbanization. Yeah. So so try to complete the book back one more question. Yeah. So choose the correct answer, then fill in the blanks, then match the following, then true or false. And also so the statement reason question. Yeah. So try to complete it. Yeah. So I will send you the answer in the tomorrow's class. Okay, so thank you students. If you have any doubt in this lesson, so please contact me. Thank you. Have a nice day.